All right, we're now at examples C, D, E, and F, and going all the way up to H. So I'm going to do these relatively quickly. For odd-numbered exponents, what is the pattern? Well, it's kind of hard to put into words, right? But we can talk about it. You literally, you basically, no matter what, you get the one smaller, so you get x to the sixth times x to the one. Now you divide that six by two, uh-huh, that's x to the third, and then I'm left with the square root of x. It's kind of hard to put in words. So do you see that? So the pattern is subtract one, divide that remainder by two, slap that over here, and then bam. I think that's hard for me. I'm sure there's other math teachers who put this into better words, but that's all I got. So let's go ahead and solve D as well. So notice I'm going to split it apart. I'm going to subtract one and make sure I put it over here. So now I have x to the eighth times x to the one. I know from before that I can divide this eight by two, and I end up with x to the fourth with the leftover of x to the one. We don't need that x to the one hanging around in there. That's kind of ugly. Of course, if you leave it, I won't count off, but there we go. Uh, now we got to do one with numbers and with exponents. Y'all, this isn't that big of a deal, but here I go. I'm going to show you how I do this. x to the square root of 12 times, when it's an odd numbered one, x to the fourth times square root of x to the one. I immediately start by splitting up all my terms. Just don't even want to think about it. Split them all up. Awesome. So now I can look at this and tell myself, okay, I have a uh, square root of 12, which needs work, and the square root of x fourth doesn't need much work. I can know immediately that that is x squared. And then I also know this x to the 1, the square root of x1, it's not changing. It's staying there. So boom. Now I've taken care of that, and now I have my square root of 12. Uh, from yesterday's work, I'm going to break square root of 12 into square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And now what do I have left over? That's a times, times the x squared from the previous line, square root of x. That, that stuff right here, I just brought down to here. And then square root of 12, I broke up into this. Now, uh, the square root of three, I can't do anything with. So it needs to go back inside its house. It wants to run all the way back inside its house. So let's do that line first. How does that look like? Okay, square root of three, you're not simplifying. I'm gonna rewrite my x squared, and then I'm gonna add my three back into my house. There it is, and my x is already there. So in case you're wondering, like, mister, where did this come from? I'm gonna underline where I got that from. So when you can't do anything and it wants to stay in the house, you let it stay in the house. Square root of four is two. So now I end up having basically uh, two times x squared times three x. If you get this far in the work, it's more or less correct, but I still want it pretty. And it needs to look like this. Some of you will get to the place you can do this in your head, but if you never get to that place, it's not that big of a deal. Just write this crap out. So check it out with F. I'm going to do the same thing. Six times the square root of 72 times the square root of X squared times the square root of Y to the three. Just split that crap apart and handle it one thing at a time. The six is fine by itself. It's over there doing its thing. Uh, the 72, what numbers work best with that? Okay. The best numbers that work with square root of 72 is 36 times 2, because 36 times 2 is 72. So I'm going to break this crap apart. 6 times square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And again, that's my square root of 72 being split into two different things, times the square root of x squared times the square root of y to the 3. Awesome for us. Uh, 6 stays right here. That's my original 6. This square root of 36 turns into 6 as well. So 6 times 6 times the square root of 2. Uh, that just stays the same. We can't do anything with it. Times the square root of x squared. That turns into an x. And so since we are done doing the square root, the house disappears. And then this one right here, I'm going to split up my y3 into y squared times the square root of y1. 6 times 6 is 36 times the square root of 2, times x. Square root of y squared is y. And then the square root of y to the 1 doesn't change. All right, y'all. Um, so we have to put all this crap together. The 36 looks good. The x is out of the house. The y is out of the house. And then I have two things that need to go in the house. So let's start with outside the house. 36 is outside. x is outside the house. Uh, y is outside the house. And then what's in my house? 2 and y. 2 and y. There it is. If 
you're lost on this, y'all, don't try to look at this and understand it in one, like, epiphany. Go through it line by line. Do exactly as I do. Don't try to solve it in your head yet. Some of you, like I said, eventually will get there. But let's go to the next one. Um, okay. Going to break this down even quicker. Uh, here we go. I'm going to say 3 times the square root of 75 times the square root of x squared times the square root of y to the fourth times the square root of y to the one. Oh my God, mister, where did the y to the fourth come from? Y'all, I did it in one step. I broke that five into y to the fourth and y to the one. And then I pulled them into separate little houses. So three is cool. Let's see what else I can evaluate quickly. So the three stays the same. The 75 needs to be broken up into 50 times three. No, it's not 50 times three, it's 25 times three. Because 25 times three is 75. This x squared, the square root of x squared is in fact x. The square root of y to the fourth is, in fact, y squared. Again, divide that four by two. And then I can't do anything with my square root of y. OK, so now what do I got here? Uh, my three is good. My x, y, my x, y squared. OK, I have this 25 thing to deal with. So I'm going to write three times the square root of 25 times the square root of three times, the, times x times y squared times the square root of y. I know it's a lot, but one by one, y'all. The square root of 25 is 5. Uh, the square root of 3 doesn't change. I can't change anything about that. This x is here. This y squared is here. And then this y can't change either. So now i got to put my house together the way I want it. So what's inside my house? I have a 3 inside my house, and I have a y inside my house. So they're going in there. They're staying. This is now what's left over. I have an x and a y squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put my y squared there, my x here. And then the numbers I have, so that's canceled out. That's We take care of that, took care of that, took care of that. Now I'm left with 3 times 5, which is 15. Pretty sweet. All right, let's go ahead and solve h as well. I'm going to switch colors so it's not as hard to mess up. I'm going to start with number 5 by quickly breaking it apart. Oh, I didn't switch colors. Hold up. Uh, here we go. Negative 5 times square root of 24 times square root of x times square root of y to the 3. Okay, that's great. Uh, what can I break 24 into? It looks like 4 times 6, I believe I can do that. So negative 5 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 4. Oh my God, mister, where did that come from? Y'all, 6 times 4 is 24. The square root of x can't do anything with that. It's just going to stay square root of x. Uh, y cubed, I can rewrite as y squared times the square root of y to the 1. Cool. That's a terrible y. How sad. All right. Now let's go through and mess with some stuff. Uh, negative 5, I'm not doing anything with. The uh, square root of 6, I can't do anything with. Square root of 4, I can. So here I go. I'm going to leave everything I can't mess with. Square root of 4 is now a 2. Square root of x stays the same. The square root of y squared is, in fact, y. And then the square root of y stays inside there. It can't move out. Uh, OK, let's put our crap together. What's inside my house? I have a 6 inside my house. I have an x inside my house. And I have a y inside my house. So a 6, x, and y are inside my house. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get around. What's outside of my house? Negative 5 times 2 and a y. I'm going to put my y down here. That's good. And then my negative 5 times 2 is a negative 10. And ta-da, we have simplified this. I know it seems like a lot, but it's once you get into the rhythm of it, it's not a big deal. Good luck.